Yes, it is finally time for the best episode of season one. Netbug, this episode is entirely filler. I mean, weren't you just complaining about filler a few episodes ago? That may be true, my friend, but this episode is really good filler. It's got action, comedy, good animation, the original voice of Megatron brought in to make squeaking noises for a knockoff Tribble. <laughs> How ironic! By leading us to this planet, the Autobots have sealed their own doom. Episode 8 starts off with our first look at Ranger 7, Shugazoom's moon, as we find out that it's a place where the team can mine crystals that can be used as super robot fuel. Know what I like about Ranger 7? The peace and quiet. Hey fandom! You know how you guys characterize Otto as always being manic and hyper? I'm just saying, stuff like this exists. Otto's character is surprisingly deep, and I wish it would get explored more often. The moon is supposed to be uninhabited, but Shiro notices and points out a small, furry, adorable creature just chilling out on Ranger 7. Huh? Ah! Oops. I would just like to point out that... In our sad, sad desperation, Spova shippers commonly consider this moment where Nova hits Sparks with a rock because she's not paying attention a quote-unquote Spova moment. It's used in AMVs. We list it in moments series. It's a, we're... Look, we, we just... We love our ship, okay? Cause every time we touch, I get this feeling so the monkey team saves the little furball in a really overdramatic way when they could have just grabbed it. And Chiro's all, hey, let's adopt it. What could possibly go wrong? Even though it'll be temporary, Gibson is less than thrilled with the idea. Just keep it away from me. <laughs> and give it a bath. According to my ongoing analysis, that creature is a new monster species. It's already damaged our computer cables and clogged the ventilation system with its filthy hair. Look, it's really easy to get on Gibson's case after you've seen this episode because you know what happens and how he gets hoisted on his own petard because of how mean he is to Thingy. But can we just all be honest here and say Gibson is probably the most sensible person about all of this in this episode? Maybe it's me because I'm kind of a germaphobe and not a huge pet person, but if I randomly found some furry, unidentified species on a distant planet, I'd want to know some info too if it's got its shots, what its fur is covered in. I mean, honestly, Gibson really gets punished for being careful in this episode, which is a bit of a flaw about it. But who cares? This is hilarious. Gibson's suffering is always hilarious. While Gibson does some research into Thingy, the rest of the team tests out a new training system. Unfortunately, the system goes haywire, but we get a really cool scene out of it. I mean, look at some of this animation. Thingy seems to be the cause of the malfunction, and Gibson is about to give the team more information on exactly what is going on, when... Airlock breach. Huh? What's going on? Outer door opening. You may be pulled into outer space and your doom. <laughs> Gibson! Gibson! Hmm. Yep, still funny. The robot starts malfunctioning, apparently because of Thingy, but the team still manages to rescue Gibson. Gibson is brought back in, and this is the first time we see this healing tube that sometimes gets used by the team for some forms of injuries. The robot is stranded, and the rest of the team is trying to cage up Thingy when... Corner! Gotcha now. Gibson would say, I told you so. The monkey team immediately goes on the attack against Thingy, but Chiro manages to calm it down without violence. I've already talked a little bit about how Chiro tends to sort of be the bridge between the monkey team and a sense of humanity, but Chiro is the least violent of the group as a general rule. While the monkey team is obviously the good guys who want to save people, they don't seem to care about people as much on an individual level. More often than not in Season 1, Shiro is the one who has to step in and make them consider these options and think about the individual, not just the group. 
This makes it even more interesting when the monkey team is fully willing to potentially sacrifice Shugazoom as a whole to save Chiro's life in the episode prior. Back to the episode at hand, Thingy is locked up just in time for Gibson to come in and say that this whole situation is actually not Thingy's fault. Right after all, one of you has been sabotaging the robot. A flake of what appears to be ordinary dandruff, courtesy of Thingy, in reality is a static virus designed to attack machines. Courtesy of Skeleton King. <laughs> yes, and I calculate at least one robot monkey has the virus and is now under Skeleton King's control. Gibson sets up a test to scan for the virus, which gives us these nifty little shots of what each of the monkey team's innards look like, but whoever has the virus, and by whoever has the virus I mean obviously Gibson, sabotages the test. <laughs> Should have realized whoever has the virus would sabotage the test. Yeah! And it's probably the same one who tried to get rid of me in the training room. And the one who cut the robot's thruster power stranding us here. This is messed up. Don't do it, Sparks. Dude, what the garbage? I mean, I know I just brought up how the monkey team sees the safety of the whole as more important than the safety of the individual in most situations, but this even applies within the team in early episodes. The Chosen One bit was not tacked on. Shiro was treated as more important than the rest of the monkey team and the rest of Sugazoom from the very first episode. Shiro is once again the voice of reason until... Yes, listen to the boy. Okay, yeah, Sparks saw this coming, you probably saw this coming. Gibson has the virus and does this cool, creepy transformation into Monster Gibson. Seriously though, it is pretty creepy, especially because Tom Kenny does some really good voice acting here. Gibson gets the robot back to Sugazoom, and wow, you guys are actually being pretty calm about this compared to another episode later in the series that I don't want to talk about. Hey. One deranged monkey is not gonna destroy Sugazoom. So which one of us is infected? Gibson, come on, let us out. We'll find a way to cure you. Seriously, Chiro is the only one who shows any concern for Gibson here. Rewatching season one, what really hits me is how much Chiro really plays the role as the heart of the team and how shallow the relations between the monkey team or between the monkey team and the Shugazumians are in the first season. I've been known to write Chiro off as fairly useless, especially in the first season, but no, he really creates these connections that impact the entire series. I mean, think about the monkey team's behavior in this versus their behavior in Soul of Evil. For whatever length of time the monkey team existed before Chiro, my guess is the atmosphere was a lot more oppressed and business-like than it is once the series starts. As to who is infected, isn't it obvious? The most powerful machine among us, the Super Robot! Okay, this entire scene is just so cool. The transformation of the Super Robot and just how awesome it looks as a monster is just so cool. After a funny little parody of the monkey team disengaging traps everybody, Thingy finds Chiro and Chiro realizes how to cure the virus. Thingy, he's the cure! When he licked you, he made you all immune. Except for Gibson. Ah, uh, I should have eliminated that beast when I had the chance. I mean, I know now he's saying it for the evils, but if Gibson had been allowed to more closely inspect Thingy from the beginning, none of this ever would have happened. The Super Robot and Thingy have this cool monster fight until Chiro figures out a way to lure Thingy into licking the robot and Gibson and curing everyone of the virus. Big sloppy lick! <laughs> Am I covered in slobber? The team manages to bring Thingy home, but not after messing with Gibson one more time. So like I mentioned before, this is my favorite episode of season one, if not one of my favorite filler episodes in the show, period. It's fun, it's cute, it has some great battles, it's just an overall really good episode. It even manages to slip in a great moral. If you're cautious around unidentified animals, you're just being a stick in the mud and you deserve to suffer. 
<laughs> okay, but really, Gibson did nothing wrong. I mean, what the heck, dude? I have done nothing wrong ever in my life. I know this, and I love you. Okay, let's see what's going on in the comments. Gila mentions that I didn't mention one of the shots in Pit of Doom that was really funny, and honestly, shame on me, because that is an amazing shot. <laughs> Sapphire Wing, the furry critic, notes a lot of animation gets reused in the series. This is definitely true, and I'll try to point out specific cases as they come up. I've been asked by quite a few people where I'm finding the high-quality Monkey Team episodes. Someone on Tumblr uploaded them a while ago, and now they're circulating around the internet pretty quickly. You can find them here on YouTube. These are just a few of the comments I got. I love seeing you guys comment. I love the conversation that happens, so definitely check out the comments and join in. See you guys next time, and God bless.